So what we just did is a start position, and that will never change unless we want the whole menu system to shift. The position will change every game loop for every menu entry. The very first time the position will be equal to the start position because it will be the very first menu entry. Then we will increment position by pushing Y down. That will give us menu entry 2's location, and so on. Now if you look at the completed sample, when we select a menu entry, it's going to be yellow, and we, we, when we don't have a menu entry selected, it's going to be white. And if we move down, it's going to change the selection, which will change the lower one to yellow, and the one we already had selected back to white. So that's going to be independent. We can have a menu system, a derivative of the menu screen, that can change it to red and blue, for example. So we want to make it completely customizable, so we need to add this to the core menu screen itself. I have a color object, and I named mine Selected Color. Public. It's going to have a public property, because we're going to get and set it inside of the derived menu screen. And capital Selected. So both get and set, return lowercase selected, set lowercase selected is equal to value. Now for the non-selected object, I chose just non-selected. Public color non-selected. Again, you can name these whatever you want. Just this, just for the tutorial. Return non-selected, lowercase set non-selected, lowercase is equal to value. Okay. Now the only thing left to do for the fields and properties is a way to hold the current selected menu entry. Now we can do this two ways, but the best way is just have an int and just selected entry. And just set that to zero. And you can add comments here. But that's it for the fields and properties. Now, we're going to move on to the menu operations. So let's add a region called menu ops. And that's just going to have a the menu system will do two things. The incrementation will be done in the update method, so that's not really a menu operation. What the operation is selected, we press enter, that many entries selected. Menu cancel, which is press escape. So those are the two menu operations we are cur currently going to have. So those they're not going to do anything inside of the menu screen itself, so it's going to be public abstract void menu select. And we're going to pass it the int selected item, or you can just leave it blank because it's going to be part of the fields. But let's just go ahead and pass it selected. And that's going to have a semicolon because it's abstract. Now we need the public abstract void menu cancel. That's going to have nothing and it's going to have a semicolon. So that's it for the menu operations. Now for the constructor, it's totally up to you. If you want to have the menu screen take over on some stuff, you can use it here. I like to have the transition on time and off time. Taken care of in this method. And I like to set it at 
if for some reason I want a different menu to have a different transition, I can do that in the implemented constructor instead of just deleting this and leaving it blank. Because that way I need to set it for every single derived menu screen. So this is just a basic way to do it. If you want to change it later on, you can change it in a derived menu screen class. And of course you don't have to do that if you don't not want to. I just like to have menu screen taking care of some of the stuff. Alright, so now we need to overload or override the unload content. We do not want to override the load content because we do not know what we're going to load. The drive menu screen will, but not the menu screen itself. Now, unload content, we know what we're going to unload. We're going to unload the sprite font. If sprite font does not equal to null, which means sprite font exists, sprite font is equal to null. So that's all we need to do for the unload content. Now, as you can see in the completed game, we have a way to move through the system. And we have a way to cancel or accept. And that's part of the override called handle input. And I believe we just delete the base because that does nothing. All right. So in the completed sample, we discuss an input system. And that needs to be added there. And the input system is from the input tutorial. That's like 30 tutorials before this one. So you can just drag that in, paste it inside the project, open it up, change the namespace, And go ahead and change it for the menu screen itself since I forgot to cover that. Okay. So now we have an input system. We're just going to grab the. Uh, we're going to create an input object called input. Now, before we continue, we need to go into the screen manager and add that to our screen manager itself. So let's add an input system of input system inside of the screen manager fields. So you can minus that and go into the properties. Public input system input system get return input system okay so now that we have a property to get the input system initialization screen manager do after init is initialized is equal to true input system is equal to new input system we're just adding the functionality of the input system to the screen manager you can do this for every screen if you want different complete control screen where it doesn't really matter but I like to add it to the screen manager itself. And you can minimize the initialize region and in the update before we do anything else input system dot update pass the game time. So there we added the basic functionality to our screen manager. So let's decrease the update and draw region go back to our menu screen delete that semicolon set input is equal to screen manager dot input system so now we're just getting a reference to that input system object now in the previous tutorial we built some 